There will be four free response questions on the AP exam. This video is modeled after FRQ number three, which is about modeling real world situations using sine functions or cosine functions. Let's pretend it's from the 2017 AP exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The blades of a boat motor rotate in a clockwise direction and complete 50 rotations every second. Point B is on the tip of one of the blades and is located directly above the center of the motor at time t equals 0 seconds as indicated in the figure. Point B is 8 inches from the center of the motor. The center of the motor is 18 inches below the water line. As the blades of the motor rotate at a constant speed, the distance between B and the water line periodically increases and decreases. The periodic function h models the distance between point B and the water line in inches as a function of time t in seconds. Part A. The graph of h and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points f, g, j, k, and p are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. First, let's see if we can find these three values on the vertical scale, representing the maximum distance from the water line, the minimum distance from the water line, and the middle distance from the water line. The midline of the graph represents the center of the motor, which is 18 inches from the water line. So let's put 18 on the midline of the graph, representing a distance of 18 inches from the water line. Point B is 8 inches from the center of the motor. That means that at its closest to the water line, point B is 8 inches closer than the center of the motor. 18 minus 8 is 10. So at its closest, point B is 10 inches from the water line. So the smallest distance from the water line is 10. So that needs to go at the bottom of this vertical scale. What will be the greatest possible distance of point B from the water line? Since point B is 8 inches from the center of the motor, at its furthest point from the water line, point B will be 8 inches further than the center of the motor. That's 18 plus an additional 8 inches for a total of 26 inches from the water line at its furthest point. So we'll put a 26 right here at the top of the vertical scale to reflect the fact that point B is 26 inches from the water line at its maximum distance. So far we have found the output coordinates for each of the five points. Let's see if we can now find the input coordinates. We are told that at time t equals zero, point B is directly above the center of the motor. This does not mean that point B is at a maximum value at time t equals zero. Function h represents the distance from the water line. So at time t equals zero, the distance from the water line is at a minimum. So we need to pick a low point on the graph to assign the input value of t equals zero. For example, we could put it here. If we do that, then values to the left will be negative input values. There's nothing wrong with that, but we can easily avoid negative input values. All we have to do is extend the graph one more quarter period to the left. Now we can call this low point t equals zero, and all of our other input values will be positive. We will need the period to find the other input values, and we can get it from this statement right here. The blades complete 50 rotations every second. That means the blades complete one rotation every one fiftieth of a second. In other words, the period is one over 50 seconds. 
If point B is closest to the water line at time t equals zero, it will again be closest to the water line at time t equals one over 50 seconds. Half of one over 50 is one over 100, and half of that is one over 200. This first mark after zero tells us that one quarter of the period is one two hundredth of a second. We can use that value to find any missing values. Each one of these marks represents one quarter of the period. The first mark is one two hundredth of a second. The second mark is two two hundredths, which reduces to one one hundredth. Next we have three two hundredths. That's one of the values that we're missing, so three two hundredths of a second. Next we have four two hundredths, which reduces to one fiftieth of a second, but next we have five two hundredths. Five goes into twenty four times, so this reduces to one fortieth of a second. And then next we have six two hundredths of a second. Dividing each of these by two, we get three one hundredths of a second. Now we have all the input values and all of the output values for each of the five points, so we can begin listing out the coordinates. Point F is at one one hundredth, comma twenty six. Point G is at three two hundredths, comma eighteen. Point J is at one fiftieth, comma ten. Point K is at one fortieth, comma eighteen. And point P is at three hundredths, comma twenty six. Part B The function h can be written in the form h of t is equal to a times the cosine of b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of constants a, b, c, and d. I need you to memorize what the parent functions look like for y equals sine t and y equals cosine t. Memorize that for y equals sine t, it starts at the midline and then goes up to its highest value and then falls to its lowest value and then ends back at the midline. By contrast, cosine t starts at its highest value and then falls to its lowest value and then ends back at its highest value. Since h of t is the image of cosine t after four transformations, we need to trace one period of cosine just like this. We can find the values of a, b, c, and d by finding the transformations that will turn the parent function cosine t into h of t. Let's build an expression for h of t filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. In unit one, we learned that the a value corresponds to a vertical dilation. So notice that on the parent function, the distance from the midline to the maximum value is one. On the graph of h of t, the distance from the midline to the maximum value is eight. This is a vertical dilation by a factor of eight. So the a value is eight. In the context of periodic functions, this value is called the amplitude. In unit one, we learned that the b value is the reciprocal of a horizontal dilation. However, it's worth memorizing this little formula that we can use to find the b value. It will always equal two pi divided by the period. In this case, the period was one fiftieth of a second. So the b value will equal two pi divided by one over 50. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So b will be two pi times 50. That is 100 pi, which we will put right here, and this is the b value. In unit one, we learned that the c value 
is the opposite of a horizontal translation. The parent function starts right at t equals 0, but this period that we've highlighted starts at 1 one hundredth. So we are looking at a horizontal translation by 1 one hundredth, which means that the c value will be negative 1 over 100. In the context of periodic functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift. Notice that the phase shift and the value of c will always be opposites. In Unit 1, we learned that the d value corresponds to a vertical translation. However, since the parent function has a midline at 0, a vertical translation will just be represented by the midline of the function. So the midline is the value of d. So in this case, d is 18. On the AP exam, they will provide an answer box that you may use to record the values of a, b, c, and d if you like. Or you can leave the answer box blank and record your answer as an expression for h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in like this. Part c. Refer to the graph of h in part a. The t coordinate of j is t1 and the t-coordinate of k is t2. In this case, t1 is 1 50th and t2 is 1 40th. C part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is it positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? I've highlighted the interval from t1 to t2. First of all, is h of t positive or negative on this interval? Well, all of the output values are between 10 and 18. Those are all positive values. So h of t is positive on this interval. Next, is h of t increasing or decreasing? It's clearly increasing on this interval because the values are rising from left to right. So h of t is positive and increasing on the interval from t1 to t2. So the answer is A. C part 2. Describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. In unit 1, we learned that wherever h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing, and wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On the interval from t1 to t2, h of t is concave up, so the rate of change is increasing. Since they did not ask us to explain our reasoning, it's probably safest to answer with a single word. Just say increasing. Part D. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of H. The period came from this statement. The blades complete 50 rotations every second. Therefore, the blades complete one rotation every 1 50th of a second. So the period is 1 over 50. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. 1 over 50 becomes 50 over 1. So the frequency is 50. That's 50 cycles per second. Let's find the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the midline to the highest value, or the distance from the midline to the lowest value. Either way, the amplitude here is 8. Note that the amplitude is always positive. What about the midline? The midline is the horizontal line halfway between the highest value and the lowest value. In this case, the midline will be y equals 18. A horizontal line is always given by the equation y equals something. When you record the midline, don't forget the y equals. Part E. Find two intervals for which the graph of h is both decreasing and concave up. 
H of t is decreasing on these intervals highlighted in yellow. I find we need to label a couple more input values. Remember, we were counting by 1 200th when we labeled these. This was 1 200th, 2 200th, 3 200th, 4 200th, 5 200th, 6 200th, 7 200th, and 8 200th, but this will reduce down to 2 fiftieths if I divide both of these by 4. But now I notice that this reduces further to 1 25th. Anyway, h of t is decreasing on the intervals highlighted in yellow. And h of t is concave up on the intervals highlighted in blue. h of t is both decreasing and concave up on the intervals from 3 two hundredths to 1 fiftieth and from 7 two hundredths to 1 25th. So this is the answer to part E. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.